In this video, we'll break down the MACD trading indicator, taking a look at what's underneath the hood, we'll poke around the code along with the three different plots that we see, and we'll understand each one of the different components and how they're calculated. By the end of this video, you should have a much better understanding of what's going on behind the scenes within the MACD indicator, along with how each one of these different lines are calculated. We can then use that knowledge and that information to do things like, say, build backtesters to try and test different patterns, different settings, and understand what tends to work on particular timeframes. Now let's start first by talking about how most people, I think, traditionally use the MACD indicator. Now the MACD indicator inside of the code is comprised of two different moving averages. This is the fast length and the slow length moving average, typically on a default uh, platform or with the default settings rather. That's a 12 period fast moving average and a 26 period slow moving average. Now naturally these moving averages are lagging behind price action, which means that the MACD is an indicator that is delayed. By default, it uses price action to calculate each one of these different inputs. And so as a result, whatever you see happening on your chart is typically a few candles ahead of what the MACD indicator is calculating. So keep that in mind, this is a lagging indicator. Now most people traditionally try and identify places where you have divergences between price action and the MACD line. This is a chart of the SPY on a one minute. And even here, you can see plenty of examples right off the bat. Here's one that stands out. Price action's making a higher high. MACD, not so much. That's a divergence. We can see what happens with price action after that. Another one, another more obvious one towards the end of the day. This is still Friday, one minute time frame chart. Same idea, MACD not making a new high. Price action is making a new high that divergence ends up resulting in a puke into the close. That's traditionally how I think most people use the MACD. You may also see folks who use things like say the crossover as a means of a momentum signal. So that's another use case in which we're really making use of things like say the histogram along with the actual lines on our chart. So now that we understand a high level overview of how people tend to use the MACD indicator, Let's understand what these lines are that make up one half of that divergence piece of the equation. Now inside of the indicator, you should notice three different pot, uh, plots first, excuse me. The first plot is a cyan line. The second plot is this yellow line. And then the third plot is the histogram that you see plotting on your charts. Now each one of those plots you can find inside of the code through the plot variables. So the blue line, for example, is the value variable. And that is doing nothing more than calculating two different moving averages. So in this case, we have the EMA 12, that's the first piece of this equation. And we know that since it's using the fast length uh, average type, which is exponential. So the fast moving average exponential length, the 12 EMA, and we're subtracting that from the 26 EMA. These are the default settings, but the fact that each one of these numbers, the 12 and the 26 are input variables, means that we can very easily change these settings. So that's part of the thing, part of the components of the MACD tool that we can test different variations of. So the first variable that we'll discuss is the value line, and that's the cyan line that you see on our chart. Now again, this is just the calculation, the difference if you were to take the EMA 12 and subtract that from the EMA 26. Let's prove that, so I'll write up very quick code here. So exponential average, close 12, let's create one more for the 26. And what we should get whenever we subtract these two lines, whoops, add chart bubble. Let's plot this on the close. So let's say EMA 12 minus EMA 26 is all of the numbers inside of this yellow chart bubble should equal the same value as the blue line on our chart. That would imply that, hey, the blue line is nothing more than EMA 12 minus EMA 26 as one clean integer value. So let me zoom in, let's choose a random candle here. So I'll use this candle. We take a look at what the chart bubble says, negative 0.094. Take a look at what you see inside of the blue circle, negative 0.09395, rounded up to negative 0.094. Let's choose another candle. Let's use say a positive candle here maybe. So if I come back 
out. Zoom out. Let's use, say, this candle right here. 0 0.1058 is what we get if we just subtract the 12 and the 26 EMAs. Take a look at the blue line value, 0 0.1058. Let me show you that one more time, 0 0.10584. So that's what the blue line represents on your chart. It's simply taking the difference between two moving averages. Now the next line that we can discuss is the yellow line or the gold line, however you see it which is nothing more than a moving average of the actual value as a data stream. So here we're taking the EMA, this case instead of using the close price, we're using all of the differences between the EMA 12 and 26, and we're getting the average over the past nine bars. This is known as the average line, this line right here. And what the average line tells us is the overall direction, the lagging direction rather, of the value line meaning which direction do we have the differences of the EMAs plotting? Is that a positive difference or is that a negative difference? Now the width between these two lines is where the histogram comes in and that's calculated using the diff variable right here. You'll notice the diff is simply the difference between the cyan line and the yellow line. We're taking the difference between the two, so value minus average, and that is then being plotted as a histogram. You can see that here, the diff variable has the painting strategy of histogram, and it's simply taking a look at the measure between the actual difference between the two EMAs, along with the average value of that. Whenever we have a cross, that's why we tend to think that, hey, the direction is now changing, as we've now changed the direction of what is our lagging average with the real time, which is still lagging by default, but value line, which is calculated using the two moving averages. So that got a little bit more complex, but on a high level, one more time to summarize. The value is nothing more than the difference between two moving averages. The average is then taking whatever that value line is and applying a moving average of its own to that variable. So this gives us both a smoothened out curve along with a more jagged curve. We then take the difference between these two lines and that is then plotted as the actual histogram on our charts. Now, using all of this different information, there's a few signals that Thinkorswim gives you built in. There's an up signal and a down signal, which if you were to think of how Thinkorswim is using this, it's suggesting that, hey, anytime our difference starts to cross the average line to the downside, we're expecting momentum to pick up to the downside. That's illustrated with the histogram value down here. And if on top of this, let's say you can find an existing divergence with price action, that may be an indication of momentum starting to shift one way or the other. Now, as we continue making more videos around the MACD topic, we can explore some of these concepts further, but the first thing is knowing what each one of these different components are and what all we can change. On a high level basis, we can most easily adjust the fast length, the slow length of the two moving averages. As soon as we change any one of these two lengths, that will then change not only the value line, the cyan line, but it will also change as a result the average line, which uses the value as a calculation. And when both of these values change, or actually any of them change, the histogram value changes as well, which then means the breakout signals will also be affected. We can adjust the sensitivity of not only the value line, but also the average line right here. And so that gives us two different sensitivity factors that we can adjust, not to mention the obvious one of simply changing the moving average type that you use from say an exponential to maybe something a little slower, like simple. This is where the concept of a back tester will come in and we'll work our way up to that as we understand and learn a little bit more about the MACD indicator. For those of you that have no background in the MACD, I hope you found today's video to be a useful deep dive in understanding what each one of these three different plots actually represents on your chart, how they're calculated, proving these calculations by recreating the EMAs from scratch ourselves, and using all of this information to know which are the different levers that we can change as we do deeper dives into the MACD. Take care everyone, good luck trading, and I'll see you in the next update.